And when this is accomplished, you want to place your arm on a solid surface, such as a table, to keep it as steady as possible. And when you first get your pendulum, you must cleanse it from any negative energies. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you are not, you're the only person to use it. It is important to know that pendulums will move in certain motions or directions depending on what material the pendulum is, is made of. Once you determine this, set and assign answers to the particular motions or directions the pendulum swings. Then you have a program, you have programmed it at that point so you can figure out if it's a yes or no answer. Right. Now once you have done this, do practice questions to confirm all is correct. And when this has been verified, you may begin asking yes or no questions and see what responses you may receive from the other side. Voila! <laughs> and, and I guess um, I've heard that, you know, I have a pendulum, but I don't do a lot of work with it, you know. I've tinkered with it. Me as well. But I guess um, it sort of gets a feel for you and, and, and within the spirit world. And it's, I guess it's a really great medium. So it's something maybe we should practice a little more or something, sure. you know. I've done a little, but not enough. Yeah, I've just tinkered around, and I, I have a pretty basic one, and uh, I would, I, I've looked at one. I saw one that's kind of all sparkly, yeah, <laughs> sparkled up, and diva looking. So yeah. that one's calling my name. I've got marked on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. I'd go for it. Mm hmm Now the next item we're going to talk about is dowsing rods, which they're also a basic set of equipment that can be used in communication. Just as the pendulum, the dowsing rods must be programmed prior to their use so that you know what the answers are that you may be receiving because they'll cross, they'll go left and right, and once you program it and assign a direction to an answer, then that's, that's your programming, basically. Now, the dowsing rods themselves are usually made of a type of metal, having a handle to grip, so the remaining metal, the rod piece, faces outward from you. Now, they are used by placing one rod within each hand while holding them with a light grip so they're able to move freely. It is best to slant them slightly, about 10 degrees or less. This allows gravity to also have a gentle influence on the dowsing rod's ability to move. You can then begin asking your yes or no questions to receive responses. But, as stating, a programming session is needed so that you may know how they move in response to a yes or a no. Dowsing rods can detect surrounding energy, but one must remember they can also detect underground waterways, which back in the day they were used for finding water. I think that's the original use. For yes, yes, absolutely. And they can find streams and underground springs, and they can also detect electrical currents. So take note of how your rods read when in the vicinity of these different influences compared to possible paranormal energies, because not everything could possibly be paranormal. You could have some kind of natural thing going on. Interference. Yes. I tell you what, you can also hold the rods in the ready position and just allow them to guide you by their movement. If they seem to direct you in a long straight path, then it's more than likely not paranormal energy they are detecting. One way to determine this is by verifying with an additional piece of equipment like an EMF meter, which we'll be discussing EMF meter shortly. Now, if both the rod and the meter are slightly, not erratically, you know, elevated, it may be a good indicator that paranormal energies are in the area and you may want to investigate that further because something's going on, right? <laughs> and that's what we all want. Mm -hmm. 
Well, one of the most popular pieces of equipment for any investigator to use would be the voice recorder. Mm -hmm. Now, an EVP, aka electronic voice phenomena, is when a human sounding voice from an unknown source is heard through a recording device. These voices are not always heard at the actual time of the recording. It is only noticed after the recording is played back that they can be detected unless you're equipped with live listening devices, which allows you to hear the EVP when they actually occur. Now, sometimes amplification and noise filtering are required to truly hear the voices clearly when playing them back. Mm -hmm. And we do this live listening all the time yes, around here. Yes, we did. Play back several things that we didn't hear while live listening. True. Now, EVPs themselves actually vary in gender, age, tone, and emotion, depending, obviously, on who you may be communicating with. The spirits speak normally in single words or short phrases and sentences. And you may also capture grunts, groans, growls, along with other vocal noises, even laughter. <laughs> yeah, we've heard we some of that. that. Uh, EVPs have also been captured with them speaking in different languages other than the ones we may be accustomed to hearing. And we have captured Spanish EVP yep. uh, recordings up here at the jail. Very common. Now, the overall quality of the EVP also varies, with some of them being difficult to understand, while others are crystal clear and very well evident. There are actual uh, categories of captured EVP readings to their quality of sound and the understanding, how you can understand them, like the rank, they range from class A to class C, depending on how clear it is, how loud it is, and, and whatnot. Now, a class A EVP is considered to be easily understood by almost anyone who listens to them with little or no dispute on what is being said. That is most clearly they're also usually um, the loudest of all the EVP captured. Um, it, they're almost like us talking. Right. They're so great. Um, a Class B EVP are a little less clear with some warping of the voice taking place within certain syllables. They are considered lower in value and um, they're more distant in sound than the Class A. Class B is actually the most common captured EVP, and some of that stuff, what you hear, it sounds like, you know, robotic, you know, you'll hear that. That's class, that's like a class B. It's got that little bit of, sounds digital to yeah. So I always have a problem with that word. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> now, your class C EVP, those are very difficult to hear with, and they have a, a whole lot of warping of the voice and of a, a, a lot of the syllables. They are the lowest in volume, often more of a whisper, and they are considered the hardest to understand out of all the classes. And most times you can hear them, we amplify them, try to clean the sound up a little bit, but it's one of the most fascinating aspects of capturing EVP is that these voices sometimes, and I ain't gonna say sometimes, I'm gonna say quite often up here at least, respond directly to the person who is talking or asking the questions. It can be um, considered having the direct ability to talk somebody from the spirit world by actually hearing their voices in response. Basically, as otherworldly communication. <laughs> you know, and, and that happens a lot here. It does. And that's something we talk to a lot of people about is the live listening because they'll come here for events or whatnot and a lot of them don't know about it. And they're always fascinated up here when they do the sessions and they actually hear talking. Yeah, the EVP they see their faces. And yeah, and they're like, oh my astonished. gosh, right? It's just pretty cool. So the next most commonly used device for all investigators would be the EMF meters, mm -hmm. also known as electromagnetic field meters. Now, EMF meters detect fields emitted by moving electrically charged objects. 
They measure fields produced by alternating current, such as the current that runs through microwaves and TVs. The K2 meter, one of the most commonly used EMF meters in the paranormal world, has a series of lights in place as the indicator of these currents. Mm -hmm. Now the colors range from light green, which is little to no EMF readings, yellow to red, an extreme EMF reading. So the stronger the currents are, the higher the EMF reading is, the darker the lights in the K2 meter reads out. Now when using a K2 meter with an investigation, you should always take a baseline reading of the room you're in so you get an understanding of what the room naturally reads. You're always going to have interferences. Where yes, and electric lines and yeah. like sockets, like a power sockets exactly. or, or whatever. So you always want to get that baseline reading so you mm -hmm. understand. Now as the investigation progresses, changes on the meter may indicate the presence of an entity or spirit. You can also correlate these readings with other experiences you may be having, such as cold spots and or chills to help validate your experience. A K2 meters are also used to communication with the spirits in a yes or no type of questioning session. Normally, if a question is asked, a no would be indicated with no lights appearing on the meter. A yes would be indicated with the lights being lit up. Yes, and we, we play with them in all kinds of ways up here. We do. The, the next uh, meter we want to talk about is the male meter. And it's also a popular device that is used. It is actually a dual purpose unit that combines both the EMF and temperature reading outputs. Now, the male meter was actually created by a man named Gary as a way to communicate with his daughter who had passed away. And with that, we'll be right back with more Ghost Talk after this short message. You're listening to Ghost Talk Radio. Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Fifty-two minutes past the hour, you are listening to Ghost Talk Radio with me as your host, Shelley Robertson, and joining me tonight is Kristen Boyd. We are broadcasting live from the haunted old Paulding Jail in Paulding, Ohio on station WBHM Digital Broadcasting. We have been discussing spirit communications, and if you missed the first part of the show, you can always listen to our show archives at your leisure on Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. We'll post the show archives on our Ghost Talk Radio Facebook page, just go to Facebook and 
use the search feature, type in Ghost Talk Radio, we'll pop right up. And while you're there, give us a like and follow our follow our page and you'll